You're listening to the Breakaway Breakdown Podcast, where we bring you interviews with some of the top ropers in the country, news about what's going on in the fastest sport on dirt, training tips for you and your horses, and so much more. I'm your host, Casey Allen. Let's jump in. Okay, you guys, I am going to be honest. I was having a little bit of a negative day when I picked up the phone to call Tiffany Sheik for her interview on The Breakdown. Now, I was down in the dumps. I was being a negative Nancy, whatever you want to call it. But gosh, Tiffany was the ray of sunshine I didn't realize I needed so badly. Now, I wanted her on The Breakdown initially because she was the co-champion of the Cheyenne Frontier Days. She won that along with Macy Young and... Macy brought her daughter on stage, and it was amazing. It was such a great moment for all the girls up there. But there was something with Tiffany's energy and her infectious smile that just made me really want to learn her story. Also, she choked up when she talked about her great Palomino mare, Susie. And after talking to her, I can totally understand why. Now, Tiffany is on that bubble knife fight in the breakaway world standings right now. She's sitting 19th. She's just a couple thousand, I want to say $4,000 out of the top 15. And then she is trailing teenage sensation Josie Connor by $3,000 in the rookie race. It's been battling back and forth in the top 15, out of the top 15. The rookies are just coming for everybody's throats this year, but I think you're going to love Tiffany's outlook on her first year on the road. You're going to think her job is pretty cool. And you know what? The anticipation's probably killing you. Let's just jump right in. But before I do, please remember this episode is brought to you by Fastback Ropes, and I cannot wait to tell you more about their products at the commercial break. Hey, Tiffany, what are you up to today? We are traveling to Casper, Wyoming, so I can go ahead and get a little practice in. We haven't had the best week this last week so I really really try to focus today to go get a good practice in before we head over to Deadwood and Rapid City. Heck yeah so how has this week been going for you? Not great and it's all it's all mental it really is um being out here for the first year it's been for sure a eye-opener as far as you know mental game and stuff like that you know, I, I told a couple of the girls on the road, I'm like, you, man, like, I just feel like I haven't done anything in a while. Like, I, I've been in a slump, and they're like, you've ran three caps. Like, that's it. Like, you just won a rodeo a week ago, and you're like, oh, man, it really hasn't been that long. But on your brain, it just, like, it seems like it's been forever since you've gotten something done. It's so weird how it works out here. I got you. So how long have you been out there? Um, I got a really late start. I have not been out here as long as majority of the girls. So I started my year off. um, I actually was on my permit when I started the actual rodeo year. uh, And I went ahead and won Liberty, Texas. And so that filled my permit. I got my card. I went to a couple of rodeos, you know, during the wintertime. I tried, you know, tried to make it into the bigger rodeos. Didn't work out for me. I had... A little horse accident. It was right before Easter. I broke some ribs and stuff, so I was out for a little while. That took me out, and I just kind of started coming back, and I really hit the road starting in Greeley. Greeley was really my first. I came up to Wyoming up north with $500 one in my name. Like, I had nothing won. I tried getting into some of the road. Like, I was surprised I got into Greeley. Like, Greeley, I was... I don't know how they let me in there just because it was limited. They didn't have enough girls in her, I guess. Like, I tried to get into a bunch of rodeos, and I am the queen of drawn out due to qualifications. So that was my whole story the first, you know, three months and in, into my journey was drawn out due to qualifications and all that fun stuff. And so they're finally letting me rope now. So I started in Greeley, and we've made it this far. Okay, and then there was that little rodeo you won. I think it was called Cheyenne Frontier Days that (laughs) that helped you out in the standings a little. Let's let's go back to that. That was kind of a little one that kind of bumped me up there a little bit. I uh, like sixty spots or something. Yeah, something like that. I want to say like I came in. Yeah, yeah. That was that was one of those that it was. It's still I don't think has sunk in. Uh, when they send me my buckle and everything, maybe then it might sink in that I won something like that. 
But yeah, that one for sure. We joked about it like the day before the finals, the final night, we kind of joked about it. And I told my husband, I was like, you know, I'm going to say this one time. I was like, do you realize that if I win it tomorrow, like I'm going to be in like the top 15 of the world. Like, do you realize this? And he was like, yeah. And like, he was just kind of like, like blew it off with like, we both kind of just blew it off as one of those like, yeah, okay, like, we'll see. Because you know, all year, my whole goal this year has just been 45. I just wanted to be top 45. I wanted to make it into the buildings next year, set myself up for next year. And everybody's always like, you know, well, you're all you're either all in or you're all out. And I'm like, well, if I make 45, then I'll go for 30. And then you know, if we make 30, we'll go for 15. Like, okay, like that's gonna happen. And then yeah, then it happened. And you're sitting here like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? <laughs> so we just skipped 45, skipped 30, went like straight to 15, and then like, ah, eh, let's just keep going. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, it was kind of one of those like, oh, let's just jump over this bridge and just kind of now these like, yeah, like at the beginning of the year, I'm one of those people that I do, I write down goals and and I try, you know, you always try to accomplish those goals and everything. And, you know, your goals change so much th- during the year. Like, you got to be able to change them throughout the year and stuff. My goals at the first of the year, I wrote down goals, and it was all Texas stuff. I wasn't going to leave the state of Texas. I was going to just circuit rodeo. I was just going to hang out. And then I had the opportunity to come up here, and I just kind of took it. Like, I've had a lot of opportunities that have kind of place themselves with me that I'm like well let's do it let's you know what what are we gonna lose like well you know what's the worst that's gonna happen so this year has just been a lot of kind of jumping off the ledge and just kind of seeing what's gonna catch me kind of deal I guess so I want to circle back to one more thing because you just very casually mentioned like and now it's August when we're recording this so Easter you know isn't that distant of a memory um would you just casually break a couple ribs like do you want to talk more about that? <laughs> <laughs> it was there's a video of it too and it's actually quite funny um <laughs> so I yeah so I I had uh, I'd sold uh, a horse and everything, and I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead, and we have a good friend down the road. He has a ranch and everything, and he was like, I've got these horses. You know, you guys take them, do it. You know, my husband team ropes, and so she, he was like, you know, go ahead and team rope off them a little bit, get them in the breakaway. And so we're like, all right, we'll be good. And it was, oh, I want to say she was a four year old, and she went out it was like her second place that I had taken her and of course it had to be a church roping so it was just a fun (laughs) little like church roping you know $50 entry fees we're just going like it's a barrel roping there's no barrier like we were just there to have fun and like first run out she did amazing I was like oh my gosh like this horse is really coming along like she's figuring it out and second run out I like she's working perfect she's right there as soon as I throw my loop and like go to like rope them she just breaks into and there's lots of pictures to go with it there's a whole video to go with it and I wrote her out for a couple of jumps and if you you know anything about me I do not ride anything that bucks because I fall off and I thought I would like casually step off of her and that step off went into a frap on the ground and yeah I was a I was hurting for, you know, a good couple of weeks. My husband made quite a bit fun of me because I would walk around the house all hunched over and, and everything. So, yeah, it was a it was a fun time for a good little while. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that was about the time of, I think, how Lotus was around, around Texas, which is only about 45 minutes from my house. So I didn't even get in, get in Holotus or anything. I didn't even try to enter because we tried coming back. I want to say it was probably four weeks before I got back on like got back on and tried to rope and every time you know my yellow horse she's not a not the prettiest stopper so every time she would stop I would like the whole breath of me would go away so it was quite fun the first couple of runs back yeah I was gonna say I don't um I don't claim to be punchy or anything I tell people I'm really good at falling off like I can armadillo and save myself and that's my claim to fame um. No, no, I'm not. I'm not like that. Like my husband, he was like, "You need to figure out. Like when you fall off, you need to learn to like tuck and roll or something. Because every time you fall off, you break something. Like this isn't. This is a good occurrence that you're having. Like maybe you should learn to fall off a little better." <laughs> well, let's talk about the horse that isn't naughty, even though her stop is a little rough. Um, 
You're, I love hearing you talk about your yellow. So let's just share the story on her and how she got to where she is today. And don't cry if you can help it. No, you're good. I know it. I know it. Well, and it, you know, before Cheyenne, I, I 100% told my husband, I was like, you know, I want this for her. Like, I didn't even want the win for me. I wanted the win for her. Like, she's come so far for me, and she she has such a, I know she can be a witch sometimes, but, like, she, she really has such a please mentality to her. She just wants to please for you, and she wants to do right for you. Very rarely does she mess up. And, and if she does, more than likely, it's my fault. But she came from about, oh, it was a couple of years ago. I've had her for probably two years now. Um, she came to us. I was looking for, I kind of got into some horses and stuff like that. I was looking for something, you know, hey, I'll get some young horses, like maybe start working on them. And if we find something that's good, great. If not, we can turn around and sell it. Like just kind of that, that little deal. And, you know, we talked to, we have a friend that's down the road and uh, he, he does a lot of horse trading and I went to him, I said, what do you got? Like, we want something cheap. Like, we're always in the market for cheap things. And so he was like, no, I got these two. We took two of them home, sent one of them back. We're like, we'll keep the yellow horse. And I, you know, straight asked him that day, of course, before we took them, like, do they buck? Like, I don't ride buckers. Obviously, we know this now. Like, we don't ride nothing that bugs nothing. Oh, no, they don't. Buck. They're fine. They're fine. One of them we didn't like. We kept her. I bought her for $2,000. Super cheap. And we didn't really ride her for the first, probably the first year we did not really ride her that much. She was, for some reason, we just kind of put her on the back burner. When she came to us, she looked horrible. She was very, very thin. I mean, she she's one of those, like, she looked like an auction horse. She was not the prettiest thing. She was very ugly. <laughs> and I didn't realize she was going to be as big as she is, but I'm glad she is. And... We started her team roping is actually where we started her because my husband heals, so he's always trying to get me to head for him. So we put her on the head side, headed off of her a little bit. Then I needed a, you know, a practice horse for the breakaway. I had another horse at the time, and so I started using her. Never really took her seriously until last year I started hauling her towards the beginning of the year. We have a little series down by San Antonio Tejas Rodeo. It's a touristy rodeo, so... We started, I started kind of tuning her up a little bit, thinking, okay, we'll start taking her there. Like, we'll go there. And so started taking her there. And actually, Sherry Mel, she's, uh, she's kind of a local legend down there. She does a lot of app shows and stuff like that. She's a good friend of mine. And she's, uh, she told me, what, what is that horse? What is that horse? And we kind of talked about her. She goes, that's going to be your good horse. And I laughed at her. I was like, there's no way. Like, look at her like I call her my donkey because she's she's always <laughs> I do. I'm that. Like, people laugh at me I'm like yeah my donkey and they're like what and I'm like she's just like she's just always dead like first rodeo we took her to she could care less like she sat back there looked like she was sleeping got into the box and everything she ran perfect did everything perfect went back to the back and just sat there so she works perfectly like that but Sherry did she was like she is gonna she's gonna be a good horse and I just kind of like laughed it off a little bit and then we kind of started taking her more and more places I took her to uh, a roping up there at Chris Neal's that he had you know that a year ago it was up in Guthrie, and I went out on my good horse at the time and went ahead, and I think I broke the barrier or something like that. I didn't have a good first run, and I was like, you know, I got two runs left. Like, this will be your first one. We'll, we'll just go for it. What's the worst that's going to happen? So I jumped on her and actually won a round check on her, and I was like, at that moment, I was kind of like, this might actually, like, she might actually turn into something. And, you know, I was always like, she's a big horse, she can run, she'll be my long score horse. So I was like, I'll have a long score horse and a short score horse. And then I took her to some some rodeos that were short score, and we won some rodeos with like one nines, one eights. Fastest run I've ever been was a one seven on her. And I was like, okay, she's good at short scores too. So, <laughs> so she just kind of worked out for everything. And like I said, she just always has that that she wants to please like we were just talking today you know I've been in that slump and there's not a single thing I can pick out from her in the arena that she has done wrong I mean everything with her has been so perfect we just gotta get my mental figured out but yeah she she's been so good to me for a two thousand dollar little horse I think I, I lucked into something pretty good and 
it was actually funny, you know, things come out after, after you win something big, it, it came out on Facebook that, uh, that, oh yeah, no, that horse fucked everybody off at the ranch and everything like that. And I was <laughs> like, oh, now the truth comes out. And she's never, she's never bucked on me, knock on wood. She has never done anything like that to me. And they're like, oh yeah, she ran so-and-so through the trees and did this and did that. And I was like, oh my God, like, that is horrible and like but thank god like the two years i've had her she's never done anything like that to me so she's and I love that the right person i guess <laughs> she learned to appreciate her life there <laughs> yeah i always i always tell her like you you start messing up i'm gonna send you back to them like you have it so good where you're at right now <laughs> is it and i love that too like because i've heard so many people say you know you can't find a good one for under 20,000 right now and obviously if you're looking at incentives or you know you want something specific but there's good horses that are out there that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for you just have to be willing to be patient and find them and have a good eye I feel like oh for sure and like that's something that you know my husband he's trained a lot of team roping horses and stuff like that and I haven't done a whole lot of training and stuff like that so we've but we've had a lot of horses come through our place that people not that they don't know what they have but they're not willing to put that time into it to see what they can be sometimes and they don't realize what they have um and so there's been a lot of people that were like hey like this would be a good horse for you to keep like he's actually pretty nice and they're like no like they don't want to put the extra time into him and like the heel horse he's on right now i think we bought him for like three thousand we bought you know we we've been those people that really lucked into some deals with the horses and stuff so it's really worked out just because we are kind of willing to look past that oh they're not the prettiest right now but later on they're gonna be super super you know they are they end up being nice is she papered no she is not supposedly she has papers but I have tried to look for, like, I've tried to hunt people down for them, and I can't get a hold of anybody. So, right now, she is a grade, grade mare, and I think she's somewhere around that 10, 10 years old is what the vet told me uh, not that long ago. So, I'm going to say 10, 10-year-old grade mare. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. This episode is brought to you by Fastback Ropes. Fastback Ropes was created in 1995 with a single mission in mind, to build the best rope on the market. That will always be their number one goal, according to Fastback Ropes. They believe it's important to focus on building the best product possible and treat customers with the respect that they deserve. Now, besides being a great company, they feature two ropes that I think you breakaway ropers are going to like. The first is the Edge, a four-strand calf rope. It's made of texturized poly. It's a tough and durable rope that stands up in all conditions and outlasts the competition. The other rope that they've come up with is exclusively for breakaway ropers, unlike the Edge, which was offered to calf ropers previously. It's called the Athena. And besides being pink and having a purple dyed core, which is awesome, the poly core provides enhanced tip weight and durability. It's a tough and durable rope that stands up in all conditions and gives a snappy finish and close. Make sure to check out fastbackropes.com for more information and to get your ropes. So, okay, if you can look past the, like maybe they're not the prettiest, what are the top three things you look for um, when kind of picking your prospects? Our biggest thing is like, the, like you can look at a horse and realize like they've got the kind eyes and stuff like that. You want the ones that have the mentality that they want to please you and that they're going to, they're going to listen to you. Um, we've got a lot of them in that it sounds bad that they're, they're scared into doing things. And, but you want the ones that want to do it for you though. That's probably the biggest deal with me. Um, the second would be for sure something that does not buck. <laughs> we, I know a lot of, I know a lot of people will take in those horses and stuff. Uh, our biggest thing is the front end. If they get light on the front end, we will send them back in a heartbeat. I mean, it does not take much for us to send one back. Uh, there's too many good ones out there to go ahead and mess with those bad ones that are going to get you hurt. Uh, so we, we've had some accidents in the past. And so we, we stay away from those that get light on the front end and how oh, the third one i mean i don't really know i mean we always seem to get the ones that have had a hard life before us um they kind of they you know just been lacking in groceries maybe they haven't been given the chance so it's 
when they do come to us, it's nice because it's almost like they appreciate you that much more. Um, they want to please you that much more. I gotcha. What are your confirmational make or breaks? We don't really have any, to be honest with you. I, I'm more of just a, I, I try to stay away from the smaller horses. I am a bigger girl. I'm six foot tall, you know, 200 pounds. Like I'm a, I'm a bigger girl. Um, I don't want to be riding a 14 hand horse. Then number one, they're not going to last me very long just because, you know, all the hauling and stuff like that. I do like one that's more kind of, I don't want to say like a ranchier style, but something with a little more bone to it, something with a little more build to it. Like that traditional um, I do, stout quarter Yeah, horse. kind of more of that traditional cow horse. You know, we I have a, a smart Lolita granddaughter. She she was my good horse there for the longest time. We retired her at 19. She's actually my backup horse right now at 22 years old. She, uh, oh, I don't you really did have pull another her back one. Out? I pulled, poor thing. I pulled, I saw, yeah, retired her when she was 19 because she started getting like soft tissue damage. And like, she's just like, just slowly, like, she would do great for a few months. We'd win, we'd win. And then soft tissue damage somewhere. So she would be off for a while. And like, it was just a vicious circle. And so, we actually bred her at 19 years old and got two babies out of her. And this year I went to go on the road and I'm like, I'm going to need a bat. Like, I can't go out there with just one horse. And she wasn't really doing anything at the house. And so I brought her up one day and I ran a few calves on her and she had not missed a beat. I mean, she was right on it. She was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, I've missed you so much. <laughs> And uh, she's in the rig with me. I have not entered on her yet. I am not going to lie to you. I am kind of afraid the first time I'm going to, she's probably going to hog on me. So she's probably, she might, I might fall off. <laughs> so <laughs> the first time around is going to be kind of fun on her. But no, she's in the trailer with us just for a backup and everything. Just because I, I didn't feel comfortable coming out with just one horse just in case. I got you. But, so are you from yeah, Texas? I am. I was born and raised down by San Antonio, um, a small town just south of Floresville, Texas. Uh, born and raised down there. None of my family rodeos or anything like that. I was I was into anything and everything sports wise. I did softball, ballet, anything, you know, up until I was eight years old and my dad had a client that he his daughter barrel raced and I went and saw it one time and I told him I said that's what I want to do and he threatened me he was like you know you're gonna have to quit everything else because that's you know that's a lot of stuff you'll have to quit all your other stuff and I was like okay that's fine <laughs> so that's when I was about eight I went ahead and uh I did that and we had an old horse at the house oh I don't even remember what his name was but once mom and dad figured out that I was going to take it seriously, they bought me. It was actually a Palomino horse. I think it sh they spent like $1,500 on her. She knew absolutely nothing. Neither did I. So we both learned together, which I don't know if that's the smartest thing. But she, you know, she You're was not great. We showed up. Yeah, we showed up to our first rodeo and my dad's like, okay, we've been doing the straights wrong this whole time. <laughs> and he like drew, drew it in the sand was like, this is how you need to do them. Like my family knew nothing. Actually, until I got to college, I didn't even know what the NFR was. I was like, absolutely no idea. We rodeoed and stuff like that. We did junior rodeos, but it was such a small, we never branched out and did the big stuff. Like to us, you know, the the youth final stuff as far as like the the Lone Star Youth Rodeo Association like those were big to us like those you know and then the the amateur rodeos that came into town you know the CPRAs and stuff those were big rodeos to us we didn't know there was a whole nother world out here of just like crazy people going down the road trying to be like carnies <laughs> and trying to make this you know the nfr and like we have no idea what that was and when i got to college you know i heard you know the college i went to school you know rodeo and and i didn't know what call like you know what the nfr was and that's kind of embarrassing to say but i had no idea and then first time i went there my husband took me there the first time and so it's kind of opened up a whole new ball game for everything Okay, so how did we go from a barrel racer on a $1,500 horse that didn't know what the NFR was in, what, 10 years, less than 10 years, to having a shot at making the NFR in the breakaway? <laughs> Hold on. Well, so I, yeah, I barrel raced for a while, and then I saw roping when I was about 
13, I saw, you know, the boys were roping. I wanted to be like the boys. I wanted to rope and everything. And so they bought me a probably, I guarantee they didn't spend over $2,000 on this horse. We, yeah, we just ride cheap horses at this point. I love this. <laughs> but this we, I love uh, it. Yeah, this, her name was Mare. She was great. She was, <laughs> she was old when I got her. I don't even know how old she was, honestly. That horse taught me how to rope. And, um, we had her probably for, I probably roped off of her for four years and she taught me a lot. And then I actually ended up on a paint horse and I took that paint horse through college and roped off of him. And he was not the funnest one to rope off of. Honestly, he would short you like nobody's business. He was not the funnest to rope on, but he for sure made me appreciate the good ones once I got on them. But no, I, I did a lot of youth rodeos and stuff. My, you know, my dad got into, and my family got into the youth rodeos. He wanted to help out. He was always, you know, about the kids and stuff. So he would help try to produce some of the youth rodeos down there in Texas and everything. And, um, he would help out and stuff. He'd bring some of the cattle for him and everything. And we just kind of stayed around the youth stuff. My dad ended up going off to work. He ended up working the pipeline for the oil fields and stuff like that. Um, so about my June, you know, about junior high area, we kind of stopped rodeoing as hard. Um, when I got into high school, we actually moved up to Colorado for a year and I had it in my mind. Like I didn't even ever go to high school state. I never went to state for high school rodeo. I think I made it one year where I could have gone and I didn't go just because we didn't know it was such a big deal. Like my family was so off and we were in so many different directions. I didn't even know it was such a big deal to go up there or anything. So we kind of skipped out on like a whole big old opportunity that I probably could. I wish I would have taken it. Looking back at it, I'm like, yeah, it worked out great. But it would have been nice, you know, back then to see, you know, I, you always think like, imagine like how good you could have been now if you would have really stuck to it back then kind of deal. And I actually had some scholarships for college to go in to play basketball. You know, I played, I, I played basketball in high school and stuff like that. And I had some scholarship opportunities and, um, it was kind of a blessing in disguise. I went ahead and tore my ACL my senior year of high school. And cause I was, I was straight, I was like, you know, I'm not going to rodeo anymore. I'm just going to go to college, enjoy everything. I like, I was going to hang it up because I didn't know there was a whole world after it to go rodeo. Like I thought, you know, what I was doing was it. I didn't realize that there was, you know, this big thing in Vegas every year that they put on that is cooler than ever. You know, I didn't know that. So then I got, you know, tore my ACL was like okay well we'll rodeo like we'll go into college and we'll rodeo You'll pay for my school so I got into a junior college actually over in East Texas uh, Trinity Valley I spent my first year over there and rodeoed there my freshman year I think I missed out I ended up the top five in the breakaway on that that paint horse and just kind of kept chipping away at it and yeah it just I don't know how my life ended up the way it is honestly <laughs> So when did did meeting Matt help with some of that? Did that like did he push your career a little bit? He did. Uh, so I met him my second year of college. We met our second year of college. So my first year, I went over to Trinity Valley. I worked that summer, and I got a call, and I went up to Borger at Frank Phillips College, and little town like you don't even know it's there kind of thing. I don't know how I ended up there. And so they gave me a scholarship. I went ahead and went up there and I ended up meeting Matt. I had to sit out the first couple of semesters, you know, due to switching, you know, from junior, high, you know, junior college to junior college. So I sat out for a little bit and rodeoed the first semester. Um, did decent. I really didn't have that much luck. I don't know what it was about my second year of college. I did not have that much luck. I stayed on the paint horse and everything and had a little bit you know hit there and everything but not really a whole lot and he actually that smart little lena granddaughter her name is mercedes uh, uh, my backup horse she he was riding her at the time his family had um kind of raised they got her as a two-year-old and went ahead and trained her and everything and he was like you need to get off the paint horse <laughs> he was like you need to get off the paint you need to get on a step up horse like he's not helping you out 
and I don't know how many times I almost fell off of that dang girl like she like there were so many times I ended up on the back of you know on the back of my saddle because she would just blow me out to the back like transitioning from you know the paint horse to Mercedes was so hard and he was like you can do it you can do it and I like there's so many times I want to throw my sucker on the dirt and be like just give me my paint horse back like it was so easy (laughs) and so he pushed me to you know he pushed me to get on the step up horse and I had the breakaway rope or swing back then you know the let it leak out in front of your face and just kind of sit there and he was like you got to bring your arm back like if you want to be able to reach and you know get power on your swing you got to bring your arm back and that was a a good two-week transition of you know cussing and fighting each other and I'm pretty sure I did not think we were going to make it through just trying to change my breakaway rope and swing on that one (laughs) but But had you had much professional help before that or were you kind of just learning as you went never it was learn as I go and I still actually I've talked to you know I've talked to Larry D a couple of times and I've talked to JJ and them and I'm like hey like I need to get out with you guys like I need to go over to y'all's place I really need to get some tuning up and stuff like that and I've just never made my way over there I really need to um no everything I've done has been self-taught it's actually really cute my dad um (laughs) if I ever talk to him this is how much my family knows, you know, about roping and stuff. I'll miss one or something and I can throw it over the calf's head and like, I like just do like, I can top knot him and he'll be like, well, did you drop your elbow? And I'm like, that's his, that's his favorite thing. That's all he knows. He's like, well, don't drop your elbow. Like make sure you keep your elbow up. Like that's all we knew growing up was like, you just don't drop your elbow. Like that's, that was the, you know, that was it. So the only training I've had, it really honestly is Matt, is the only one that has, like, been like, no, you're doing this wrong. This is how you need to do it and help me out a lot. So, no, Matt has been my professional training if I'm going to if I'm gonna take one. <laughs> uh, don't let it get to his head, though. No, oh, I know. I try not to. I try not to. <laughs> I gotcha. So... What would you say, where would you say your motivation to keep getting better has, like, come from through your journey? Because obviously you're roping with the best in the world, and that's a pretty crazy story to, like, just kind of (laughs) go through and teach yourself. Like, that's amazing. It is. So, you know, it was probably about, you know, three, four years ago still. I mean, seeing those girls, you know, the the JJ's and the Jackie's and like first time I met Jackie Crawford I'm gonna tell on myself right now first time I met Jackie Crawford I was like starstruck I saw her in Vegas she probably thought I was a crazy person because I was like oh my god it's Jackie Crawford and like I freaked out and was just like like I was like I was starstruck like I had no you know no idea that I was gonna meet somebody like that and then it's crazy you know four years later I'm roping with them every day and it's like hey girl how's it going you know, JJ, you know, she's, uh, she's one of my favorite ones just because, you know, you see her, you see her anywhere and she's going to know your name. You know, she's going to be that person that's always like, you know, she'll address you right there. I was at CPRA finals. I was like 2018 and she, you know, I'm warming up in the warm up pen and she's, Hey Tiffany, how's it going? And I like had to whip around real quick was like, <laughs> I've ne- like, how do you know my name? <laughs> like, you know, it's crazy to go from, you know, it, four years, that's not a lot of time, you know, I was so, I don't even know the word I'm trying to think of, you know, I was so scared with them, you not even scared, but starstruck, I was so intimidated by those girls, and now, you know, they're, they're just human, they really are, and, you know, I don't, I still don't know if I consider myself all the way up there with them, but being out on the road with everybody, I'm like, we all 100% are all on just this crazy struggle train that we're just trying to make it happen. And there's not a single person out here that is just like, oh, they're going to beat us every single time. Like everybody goes through these crazy up and downs out here. And I wish I could tell myself, you know, four years ago, like they're just like you. They're a hundred percent. They're no different than you. Like they, you know, they go through all the same struggles that you go through and, you know, they're, they're not, no, I'm not trying to say they're not that big of a deal, but like, they're not crazy far up there. Like they're just like you, they really are. I believe you said in your interview with Chelsea after Cheyenne that 
your job changed was your job change was a lot of the reason you got to go on the road. So would you mind telling everybody what wonderful organization you work for and what you do there? So I work for the WCRA Rodeo. I am the breakaway and tie down rep for them. Uh, that has really, really, they've done wonders for me as far as the flexibility and everything and being able to rodeo. In the past, I've always had either the office job or the job that takes you away from home and everything like that. Uh, I've never had really a true, you know, remote job that I've been able to be out in the field with the rodeos. So it's really nice with the WCRA, you know, I'm able to go ahead and be at these rodeos and be able to talk to all these people, you know, the girls, I see them all the time. And they're like, hey, you know, what's, the, you know, what's the next event that's coming up or, you know, what's the format going to be like, you know, for Fort Worth in December. And, you know, I'm able to tell them right then and there and, you know, be able to be that rep out in the field, have that flexibility and still be able to rodeo. And I think the girls and the guys, you know, the, t the tie down ropers and everything, I think they kind of respect me maybe a little more or like you know i i have that same same mentality of them i'm able to be on the road with them they know i'm not just a person you know behind a computer trying to you know call them and be like you know hey how's it going out there you know i'm out there with them and you know they see me struggling with them so they know that i understand you know a lot of the stuff that they're going through yeah, that's one thing I've always loved about the Debbie CRA is it's ran by rodeo people that know the sport and, and know how it works. So let's talk about the, you know, kid Tiffany from a small town going to junior rodeos. For someone like a kid version of you, how would the Debbie CRA be beneficial to that person? There is so much opportunity with the WCRA for the little people. Uh, we've got, so they just went ahead and released a division youth, which is going to be in, next year in July. We're going to have a whole rodeo. It's $200,000 added for the kids and everything. And the great thing about it is you don't have to be that kid that's going to every high school rodeo or the, you know, the best of the best over and, you know, we don't, they don't have to be going to all that, the big name stuff. You can go to the little youth rodeos, you know, the Lone Star Youth Rodeo Association like I was in, and you can go there, nominate those and get points to go to this event that will bring you into that world. Uh, I really wish they had something like that when I was a kid. So maybe we could have been open to everything a little more, but you know, life is what it is, but no, like we've, the WCRA has really started, especially with the youth part of things. They've really been pushing the youth kids um, to have stuff for them. That way they can start up in, you know, in the rodeo world and get them on the right track. You know, these youth kids are no joke. Like, I've been going to these qualifier series for the division youth at, you know, the Chris Neal events and stuff. And I look at some of those kids and, like, their dads are down there telling them, oh, yeah, make sure you see shoulder out. And I'm like... I don't even know how to do that sometimes. Like these 12 year olds are going to whoop my butt in two years and I'm going to be so embarrassed, but so proud at the same time. <laughs> so like I always loved when I could load up a trailer of Colt and like I'd go to a, a barrel race or roping back home. And for some of the events, I mean, as cheap as $25, you can get an entry to get points through that. And you're already going like, that's what I think people don't realize sometimes it's like, no, you don't have to do anything else except hit submit on an app. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the WCRA, there's been multiple events, like Rodeo Corpus, for example. I made it into Rodeo Corpus by going to the little Tejas Rodeo, you know, the weekly, you know, touristy rodeo right down the road. It cost me $25 per nomination. I want to say I nominated it like three times. So in total, I spent less than $100. And I made it into a rodeo that pays out over $15,000 to go ahead and win. So you're able to go, you can play it different ways. You can go to the cheap ones and play over there in those ones and just get enough points to make it in on the leaderboard. Or you have people that they do go to the big ones. There's, there's pros and cons on it. Like 
the cheaper ones, yeah, like they're, they're super easy. I'm a big fan of those and going to the jackpots and that way you can rack up the points that way. But if you do enter those big ones, you know, if you do a Cheyenne, yeah, it's going to be a $200 nomination, but out of that $200, you don't have to nominate the rest of the time. You can be done if you wanted to. Yeah, you so can get it, points it does, for five runs, right? Like, or four or five runs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the big thing is, you know, the jackpots and the multiple head rodeos and stuff like that. Those are the ones that for sure you want to key in on just because, you know, you get points and all the paid rounds and stuff like that. So those are really nice to go ahead and get into that way you're able to rack those points up so quick and they do they make it so easy they have an app right there that all you do is get on there and you know you search for the town that the rodeo or the jackpot or whatever you're going to is in and you go ahead and find it and say you know this is what i want to nominate for and hit pay and you're done and of course you got to put the coupon code in there (laughs) we always have coupon codes so you always want to reach out to your reps and stuff like that i know we we have different reps for you know the the team roping has a rep her name's whitney lloyd we've got uh on the barrel racing side we've got trina ream we've got on the rough stock side we've got kate moat and uh Rob Smets over there so we're we're pretty full on rodeo people everybody has you know been part of it and knows the ins and outs of it so if yeah if y'all ever need help with anything we're the ones you want to reach out to you can always call the support or reach out to us we've always got always got ways to help you out any way we can yeah I love those coupon codes when I get one I'm like they're like oh you want to use this yes I do want to use that one yeah. I love this yes I want to Yes, I want to save money. Like, is that a question? (laughs) Awesome. And then, where was I going next? Okay, so you talked a little bit about the mental issues that you're having, kind of going back to your rookie season. So what are some of those things, like what's the most unexpected mental battle you've had being out on the rookie trail this year? just the so the biggest the biggest one is just gonna be I got out here so like I feel like I got out here so late in the season and we've got a lot of rodeos left like we after Cheyenne I looked at my schedule and I didn't really change it around a lot you know people were asking me are you gonna start going everywhere now you need to enter everywhere and I'm like no like I'm I've got pretty much everything. I added a few of the playoff series rodeos in there just because, you know, it was like, okay, like maybe that's something we need to look into if we're going to do this. You know, maybe we should try for that one. So um, biggest thing that I ran into is just trying to sit here and think, and I want to say it was Josie Connor that went ahead and put it in one of um, one of her interviews or something that I just saw not long ago, and she said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. and which is a hundred percent true because you go from week to week like we just ran five rodeos this last week and it seems like it was so much when really after Cheyenne when I hit Cheyenne I had 25 rodeos on my rodeo count I want to say and in the next two months from Cheyenne to the end I want to say I had like 20 or 30 like I was going to over double my rodeo count you know in those two months and there's so much of the season left to go and it's sometimes it's so hard to you miss one somewhere and it's like oh my god that could have been the one that got me in and it's like there's so much rodeo left to go that you can't put so much focus on one run at a time you have to have such a short folk you know such a short memory of you know your last runs and stuff like that as far as like you know if I go out there and I have a bad run I'm just like, okay, like, we're on to the next one. Like, why don't we want to think about that one anymore? Like, we're done, we're done, we're on to the next one. You know, it's, it has been hard trying to trying to do that because, you know, they always do sit on the back of your head. You can sit there and say, oh, you want, oh, you know, I'm done with that run. I don't want to think about it anymore. But really, truly, and honestly, it is still right there. And I do catch myself a lot of the times, you know, my husband has finally been like, you got to stop looking at standings. And I'm like, you're 100% right because you're like, oh, well, so-and-so did good here. They're going to jump up and you're, you're, you're going to be here. And it's just, it starts really playing tricks on you. Like I came out here just roping. Like that's all I was doing. I was just coming out here, having fun, roping, enjoying the ride. 
and I'm having to kind of step back now after the last couple of weeks and be like, we're just out here having fun. We're roping. Like, that's all we're doing. We're having fun. We don't care if we make top 15. We're just here having fun at this point because all that stuff will really get into your mind. And even though you don't think you're thinking about it subconsciously, you're thinking about it. It's there in the back of your mind, even though you want to say it's not. Yeah, I was going to say with like, I know you and Josie get along and like with her coming back in her dang walking boot after breaking herself. I'm like, I'm not even going to ask about the rookie standings. I'm just going to let you two and whoever else is in the race, you know, Brianna Learman, I think Addie yeah. Will, Haley Williams. I'm going to let you guys figure that out. And I'm just going to ask at the end of the season. <laughs> I think it's just like, I don't think any of us. I don't, like, I know me, like, I tried, I know there for a little bit, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I just hit number one in the rookie standings, and it's like, oh, that's great, and I've had a couple of people ask me about it, and I'm like, but it's so crazy, because, like, Josie just went this week, and she did really good in Codwell, she's sitting really good in the average, so I'm like, okay, well, now she's ahead, and, like, you can drive yourself so crazy, being like, oh, she's ahead, now I'm behind, now we're, like, we're just going back and forth with each other, so... I know uh, I was really, really disappointed when I when I did hear. I thought Josie had gotten hurt. I wasn't for sure. And then one of the girls, I want to say it was Martha, was like, "Yeah, no, she, you know, she was walking around in a boot." And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like heartbroken. Like I was just like, "That sucks." Like I. And then when she did come back for Codwell, I was so happy. I even told Jay, I was like, "I'm so happy to see you guys back out here." Like I would like because we want each other. I'm one of those people that. I want everybody to be out here. I want everybody to rope their best, you know. Yeah. If, you don't want to win it and then everybody say, you just want it because Josie broke her ankle. It, and it, Josie, it, if you are it, listening, it, it, you give me anxiety or your mother agrees with me. Josie, you give us all anxiety, roping in your walking boot. Anyway. <laughs> hey, she's, kick, she's kicking some butt in that walking boot, though. I don't care. She is. She you know, is. Like, first, that kid's tough. First run back in Codwell, I was just like, <laughs> shit she's not gonna make this easy on us like <laughs> like there went that <laughs> like and that's that next generation you talked about i mean she's what 18 years old and she yes, helped me with my rope on her. <laughs> i mean she's literally sat down and i was at a clinic uh, at larry d's and she was there and i sat and talked to her about the start and stuff forever like she's got so much knowledge yeah she does and i and i don't know you know i've i've had a couple of conversations with her and stuff like that and yeah just the like I swear she's she's got more mental knowledge than I do when it comes to rope and have to like she's so mature for her age Mm -hmm. and so many of those young kids are you see them and everything they are so mature for their age as far as when it comes to rope and they have so much knowledge you know because and I'm not saying it's just because of the opportunities, but they've really grasped onto those opportunities, those clinics and, you know, the help that they've been able to get and everything. And they've really taken that knowledge and really utilized it. And I think that's the best thing that younger generation can do is take the knowledge. You know, if somebody's trying to help you, I don't care if it's one of the committee members that are there at some of the rodeos and something that, you know, he was an old roper, you know, 30 years ago, and this is how he did it. You know, there might be something in that conversation that clicks a light on in your head and is like, hey, like, that might be on to something. Like, just because they look like a crazy old man, like, that's, he probably knows something or might have a little something that you can take away from that. I don't care who it is. It could be the best person in the world or, like I said, it could be that, you know, been out of the game for 30 years. He's probably, you know, those people are going to know something and you can benefit off a little bit off of every conversation that you have with somebody. And that younger generation, I really feel like a lot of them, the good ones that you see out there, they grasp that information and they do take it in. Yeah, I remember when uh, Jackie Crawford's Elevate video came out when I was in Mm -hmm. middle school or high school and it was like the biggest thing ever for breakaway ropers. Like we all scrambled to buy it the day it came out and now you have breakawayroping.com where you can get on there for not even the cost of an entry fee and have access to like all these girls that have made the nfr and i'm like this is wild <laughs> like, yeah the knowledge the knowledge that you can get from you know just going online and watching these videos and you know it's crazy the amount of stuff that you can go ahead and get into with so cheap nowadays that i mean and it's right there i mean it's on your phone you can get to it right there yeah you know? <laughs> and i know i think it's 
Tyson and Jackie. I think they go ahead and have, you know, have a deal that they go ahead and do that, you know, helps with the mental and they go over stuff every week. I think they have a Zoom meeting every so often. Um, Like that's very helpful to a lot of people out there. For sure. Okay, so if you had to say, I ask everybody that comes on, um, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? It can be life, rodeo, funny, not funny, anything. Oh my goodness. I know. That's a hard one. It's always fun. I know. I would honestly say the biggest piece of advice, um, just keep your head down and go. Like, you know, whatever is thrown your way as far as whatever cards you're dealt with, we're not all dealt with the the greatest cards. We don't all have the greatest starts and, you know, in our rodeo careers and stuff like that. But as long as you keep working at it and you keep trying at it, um, don't get yourself too down, you know talk positive think positive about it when you start talking negative and thinking negative and everything obviously your actions are going to follow you but to keep your head down and just keep pushing through it and everything use what cards are dealt with you yeah it might not be you know what you expected you were going to be at but sometimes it's so much brighter than what you ever could imagine and you just got to live those moments and just enjoy them and step back a little bit and realize that even if you're like on the road, you're not having a great time, you know, with your roping and everything, this life that we live out here on the road is so amazing. Like the country that we have seen, we, you know, we went through a forest the other day and I told Matt, I said, we're pulling over, I'm jumping in this river. And like, we like just the fun, I did. I was like, I'm jumping in that river. I don't care. Like, he was like, you know, that thing is freezing cold. I was like, I don't care. Like, when am I ever going to get to do this again? We were in the middle of Montana and like, just enjoy your life and just like, just have so much fun with it that, you know, because you're going to look back later and you're going to, you know, you're going to look at these memories that you made out here, whether, and you're not going to be like, oh yeah, no, I went to, you know, I went to Missoula and I missed one. And it, like, no, you're going to be like, hey, from Missoula to this other rodeo, we went through the forest and I jumped in that river right there. Like, we're not going to think about these bad runs. That, like, you're going to think of everything else that happened in between them. Those two seconds of a run, you know, is just such a small portion of everything that happens out here. You just got to enjoy everything else. The biggest thing that I hope people realize that, you know, my biggest thing is I was so scared coming into everything and so intimidated by everything and everyone. Again, we're all just out here all on the same struggle bus, just trying to make it work. You know, I don't want anybody to ever feel like, you know, I I've been to some of these rodeos and girls don't have anybody to push their calf. And there will be multiple girls run over there. Danielle Lohman pushes our calves all the time. Like Sawyer, she'll get in there and push calves. Jill Tanner, she's right there. Like, there's so many girls right there that are going to be in your corner, like, throughout this. You just got to find those girls. And and don't get me wrong, there's going to be, you know, like Cheyenne, for example. Like, yeah, it was a big win and everything like that. I had a lot of people that did come out of the woodworks in a way to say that, you know, we're proud of you, we're happy of you and stuff like that. But you, like, kind of got to take a step back and look at those people that have been there from the beginning for you. My husband's been there from the beginning for me. Obviously, he really doesn't have a choice on that. (laughs) But, um, But those people that have been there from the beginning, you know, even, you know, when you're not on top of the world, because it it gets lonely. Like, you know, you you make a big win and everybody's your best friend and you just feel like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And, you know, you're on top of the world and everything. And two weeks later, you can't seem to catch a calf and it gets lonely down there. Like that, that bottom of the hill gets a little lonely and those, you know, you got to find those people in your circle that are going to be able to help you out and, you know, stick there with you and, you know, laugh it off with you. You know, I wrote for myself in, in Codwell the other day, I blew my smoke and I was like, well, that was a first, like, okay, we can only go up from here. <laughs> It you know, still happens still to the best. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was just like, I can't, like, I blew the start out and everything. I was, you know, and then I blew my smoke and I was like, how does this even happen? Like, yeah, yeah, it happens to all of us. I mean, we're, we're all out here struggling and I do hope that, like, all the younger ones, you know, I look back at myself, you know, four or five years ago and I wish I was, like, more confident in it and to be able, like, that confidence, I wish it would have stuck a little more so that way I could have, you know, 
gotten all this done maybe three years ago kind of deal you know but for sure like younger people like don't be afraid like we're all most of us are really nice people i swear and we will all help you no matter what like we will we will give you the shirt off of our back just to see somebody else like do the best that they can do that's awesome all right tiffany thanks again for talking to me today and this was fun i had a good time i hope you did too (laughs) i did too i did too yeah we've got we've got about six hours left on the road today and then we're like i said we're gonna get some practice in so hopefully we can do some good over in uh deadwood and go to that i got that qualifier series and wrap it so we'll be over there for wcra working a little bit too (laughs) Well, awesome, Tiffany. All right, I will talk to you soon, and thanks again. Thank you. We'll see you down the road. I am such a fan of Tiffany already, and I hope that you guys learned something or felt inspired by this interview. Make sure to keep up with all the pro rodeo drama as the regular season winds down. Yeah, October 1st is coming up quick. Can you believe it? I can't. It's flying by. But the Breakaway Roping Journal will be with you every step of the way. So if you want to stay in the know, keep up with our website, our social media. And if you're in the market for your next breakaway rope, please consider FastbackRopes.com to find your next weapon inside the arena. We will be back with roping tips and interviews coming up in the next couple weeks. And like I said, it's getting crazy as the season winds down. So have a lovely week, you guys. If you're entered up, go kick butt. Have all the fun. Thanks.